Hey everybody, it's DBet here, uh, back with another unboxing. So these are the remaining mercenaries that I was missing. Now, if I'm going to play Kador, the only one I can really use is Mr. Magnus here. Um, and actually, we're going to put him off to the side because we're going to do him last. So the three that we're going to start with are these guys. Now, if I'm using Kador, I can't use any of these. The reason I bought him is twofold. One, I like to collect miniatures, um, mercenary miniatures, I mean. And two, like I said, if I ever, in some of my other videos, if I ever decide to pivot or change, um, I want to make sure that I have the, like, infrastructure, the back end set up, the mercenaries, I have the options. So we're going to start with um, Mr. Garrity here. Um, he looked pretty interesting. Like, I like the, the smoke effect coming from his hand. Hopefully I'll be able to recreate that. These bags. This one is like barely sealed. Okay. Looks like he comes in two pieces. Put that over here. And I'm gonna put actually we'll just move this over off the butt the thing. It's getting in my way. Oh no, stop sliding. Okay. So Mr. Garrity. Looks pretty clean. No connection points where I'd like expect supports to be at all. Although, let's see if I can get close enough for that. Mm, camera isn't focusing properly. Right across the edge here, on the like like right below the little metal things, you can see this obvious line that runs across it, like right of where the tip of that face is. Yeah, the camera's trying, it just can't get there. So this is still the Razor Keo, and I think we're gonna use this. Yeah, some cleanup needs to be done there. For uh, future unboxing and paint showcases and stuff like that because of that autofocus feature. And that just tabs right in. The GoPro doesn't do that. In fact, I think I'm probably gonna only use the GoPro for um, uh, like, in the wild vlog type things, or like if I have a setup for an unboxing that the, this setup just can't support, then I'll probably use that. This character, I think this is like his third incarnation. So uh, I quit on second, and at one point I was playing 40K at a local store called Dropside Games, which is now closed, rest in peace. Um, the owner now actually <laughs> works at a games workshop store, funny enough. But um, people there played uh, Mark III. And when they found out I played Mark II, they're like, oh, you should come back. You should play. And I was like, mm, I don't know. And one of them talked me into doing Grimkin. So, because uh, I like the idea of Grimkin. I like the aesthetics, you know, spooky monsters, fairy tales, all that jazz. Um, and I was looking into the list, and I saw that, like, his first version, when it was first printed, was as a magazine promo. And to get him, it was so expensive because that was the only way you could get him. And I was like, mm, nah, I'm good. <laughs> I just saw that one model and I was like, <laughs> nope. Oh, is he a 40 mil? Get out. Okay, that's cool. I don't have a big collection right now. How many pieces is this dude? Three? What is this? This is his legs. I don't see any support. He needs a good cleaning. So I found out from, I was watching another YouTube video that talked about the 2022 drama that happened at Gen Con. And part of the Privateer Press press release while that was going on was talking about how this like little white stuff, it's not uncured resin, it's uh, particulates from the Sonic Cleaner. Cause I was like, well, they're, it's not mold release agent. That's for damn sure. So what else could it be, you know? That doesn't make sense. It, inside that mouse, a little shiny. Okay, so they just, like that. Look at the little horns, his little skull face. Comes out really good, no supports. And they're like, yeah, just use warm water or ISO. I said isopropyl alcohol and a soft toothbrush and it'll clean it right up. And then the axe is nice and sharp, and you got all the little soul faces. Let's see if the camera will zoom in on it. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Maybe? Yeah, there it goes. 
So, um, yeah, how hard is it to get? Because that looks like it's going to be one heck of a heck of a joint. Oh no, just pops right in there, huh? I guess if you use the top as a guide, it works. Okay, okay. This guy looks like he's going to be a badass. I do like that they put him on a 40 mil. I like this guy. He's a little bit bigger. Um, what was I going to say? Yeah, so isopropyl alcohol, soft toothbrush, clean off the white gunk with ease. They're like, oh, or you could just prime over it, which I think is what I ended up doing with one of those models from the first batch, but it's whatever. I didn't run into any painting issues. So if you wonder what that is, there you go. Uh, oh, another lesson I learned, because like, since we're going to be using the Kia for now and for stuff like this, because the autofocus is um, when I was doing the paint painted model show off, I was still using the, I was using the Kia at the time. That was its first video. But um, I was showing the models to me, not the camera. How many pieces is she? Is she only one piece? So, well, we have three pieces, two pieces, one. It's like all over the place. Yeah, she's just one piece. So there's a little bit of cleanup that needs to be done on our midsection, just like a couple little supports that weren't clipped. Yeah, you can see it there. Um, and then there's some feet supports that weren't clipped or shaved. But I mean, who cares about those? We got a good base here, let's go. So yeah, I need to pander more to the camera per se when I'm showing stuff off, not necessarily in my own eyes. Cause like right here, I could see it and handle it and look at it perfectly fine, but it's so far away from the camera that you guys don't get to see as much of it. And you guys are the goal. I get to look at these things as much as I want. If you don't have them, this is your one time, you know? Well, I mean, I guess you could put it on loop, but these three are just, I'm gonna paint them for fun. You know, until I get other models in or other kits, and I'm going to make sure they look decent. Another pro to having them is, like, once I start playing, if I get other friends into it and they only buy, like, the starter, like, let's say somebody gets um, Ogoth Sea Raiders. I think these two can go with Sea Raiders. So if that's the case, I could just be like, hey, do you want to play with these solos? And they're like, yeah, sure, that sounds great. And then they, if they, like, using the solo, they might buy it. And then once, you know, somebody buys into a game, they're usually going to stick with it. The big guy. I'm so excited for this one. Does he have lore in the back? Oh, he does, but he also has an assembly diagram. Look at that. I didn't even look at the other cards. I just assumed that they were also just lore. I wonder if the other two have assembly diagrams. We got multiple bags. Okay, we got a small bag. The big bag. It's the new black resin, too, which means it is going to be more sturdy than other stuff. Okay, so what are you? You look like your Magnus. Yeah, let's just get everything out of the bags first. And then we'll go piece by piece. Okay. The, the, the fabled 80 mil base. Dun, dun, dun. Oh. Huh. Okay, okay, okay. And then we'll move the bags out of the way. So first, let's take a look at Magnus. A little bit of cleanup right here on his bandolier and then down here on his waist and then down there on his arms. He's got a lot of like internal supports that weren't clipped. His feet look like they're pretty okay. The cloak might need a little bit of cleanup. In here on the weapon sword or in the, like the sword handle, you'd expect some, but they're good. Rocket launcher has some. Yeah, he's definitely gonna need some cleanup, but he looks fantastic. I love that, like the the style and everything. I cannot wait to paint this guy. And I mean, he, the whole unit clocks in at 20 points, which is a lot. Okay, this is one of his chainsaw arms. And even in a hundred point list, that's so hard to justify. But people are saying he's really powerful, so <laughs> it'll be funny. Like I can throw him on a table before I can throw anything else. Just be like, bam. I just got Magnus and a Warcaster, no jacks. Come at me. Can't really see any print lines. What is this? This is a wrecking ball. This goes on the other end, right? Oh, there's a slot. Okay, we'll, we'll, we'll come to that in a sec. Okay, okay, okay. You can definitely see print lines in there, but if I remember right, this it's like in the thing, this thing, so you'll never really see in there. So they were just like, we don't need that smooth. Like the chains look fantastic. Let's go with this arm. 
And you see, I don't see any supports of me cleaning up. That looks wet and uncured. Maybe. It's not really smushing. It's not getting on my finger. It's just really shiny looking, I guess. And same here. Kind of rough texture actually. Could be uncured resin. This is gonna need sanding. You can see this is where support won't will it really though? Because if this connects here, mm, maybe it is kind of it is still visible. And I don't want that priming and looking funky. Yeah, you can catch your fingers on this. I'm gonna have to go over all that with the back of the hobby knife. So this arm it's not super enthused about but I mean that looks so cool <laughs> with the with the with the ball and chain just slots right in there okay let's do the legs next get them up here for the camera oh, that's the Menoth symbol signer symbol let's go cool. callbacks to his past I don't see any supports that need to be removed. A little bit of cleanup on the tabard. Yeah, he looks fine, I guess. This, I'm not thrilled about. I don't know what that is. That looks like a cut, maybe? Hmm. Uh, supports there. I don't want to push too hard on him. And that's what, the top? Yeah, it's by the arc node. Is there any by his head? Yeah, there's some in there. Yeah, there you go. Now you can see it. There's none back here. There's one right there. There's a couple pieces. So you need instructions for this, really. It's <laughs> looks pretty simple, but I mean, there's a reason why Preparation 8 says do not ingest. So instructions don't hurt, I guess. <sighs> You never, you never know with people. Somebody buys them. I don't know where to put this. Well, really, the, the top half connects to the bottom half. Like, what do you need need to, to know here, homie? <laughs> what? <laughs> Can you put this upside down? I guess you could. It's just keyed differently, like Hulk smash type thing. Ow, ow, it's biting me. Ow. Yeah, without like glue, it's gonna be weird. But let's see if we can just do the torso. So, I mean, obviously for a miniature this big, there's definitely going to need to be clean up. You can really see the print lines when you hold the top at a certain angle. Um, hopefully those don't translate once primed. This is a little loose, but that's why it keeps falling out. But realistically, once he's primed, hopefully he'll be okay. There's the other arm. It's not bad. Like this big old rocket launcher up there. I mean, you can obviously see print lines here, but this won't be visible once he's plugged in. Yeah, all that crap gets stuck. And when it comes to print lines with something like that, that's, that could technically be a good thing because of the simple fact that the print lines will give you textured areas for the glue to grab to if you want to. Let's see, and then this arm, we can plug in here. Yeah, not bad. And on the 80 mil base, he a big boy. Oh, neat. I hope they all come that way. Can't wait to get my tanks. But yeah, that's it. So those are my four new purchases. The, tonight I'm probably going to clean them up and then prime them maybe. I'm out of Chaos Black, so I kind of want a Zenithal, like Magnus and Invincible here, and uh, or Invictus. I don't know why I keep calling them Invincible. Um, Magnus, the Unstoppable, and in, in, uh, Invictus. I think I want to Zenithal, so I'm gonna need Rattle Black, cause, and my white's probably low too, so it wouldn't hurt me to get white either, just so I could have two clean cans. I might do that on the weekend on Friday. So these ones might take a little longer to prep than, than you know, the other ones. Well, the three back there, I will probably just do an all white. 
and I pointed back there like y'all could see that. Herp, derp. Uh, anyways, yeah. So that's the models. I hope you enjoyed. Um, as I get stuff, I'm, I'm usually going to show it off. Uh, the next thing I know I'm going to be ordering isn't even a kit per se. I'm going to be getting my storage solution because what I want to do is get all of this stuff um, like magnetized and ready for uh, accepting models so that as I finish models, I can just, you know, clip them onto the bases and stuff. And how I mag models, just like not like the pieces, but like the bases, super simple. Like before you start gluing to bases or whatever, if you know you're going to mag, one of the dirtiest, cheap, cheapest tricks you can do once you have your magnets. And I don't even know if these are big enough for this one. These are just magnets I had on hand. So, because I just used these on the first four. It's like, let's say I know I'm going to want to put one like here, right? Is that good enough clearance? Will that work? Mm, you can't tell depth, but I can. I'm holding it up to me. Let's see if two would work. Or if it's too thick. Mm, too thick. Definitely too thick. Let me get these out of the way because that's what it's reacting to. So maybe one. I, I definitely need thicker, mo thicker magnets for this. But let's say I know that's where I want to put it. You position where you want on the negative side. And then glue from there. So like I know it's right here. I would put glue there and then just drop the magnet. And once I have all my magnets installed, I'm good to go. You know, like I, the, the negative ones will keep these in place. And then I just leave it like that to dry. Because super glue, when you leave it to dry, uh, will like do this white misty crap if it's like enclosed anywhere. So like if you were to put the magnets in glue and then like leave it face down, they get all misty and there's like residue everywhere and it's horrible. So there's, there's your modeling tip if you didn't know how to do it. But yeah, just any good old fashioned magnets, rare earth magnets, make sure they're nice and strong, usually work. There's probably like people who've already got like the perfect size where they sit flush and everything like that on like online. Just just Google it. And I took the put the base away without or put everything else away without the base. Um, but yeah, it's I want to get the storage box for everything. So like as I finish it, like with those four, I can just, you know, slap them in the box and then move on. This way I don't have a bunch of just finished models just sitting there, even though the basing project is going to take forever before their base. But it is what it is. All right, I'm rambling at this point. Um, all right, I'm done. I am going to bounce and start working on the other guys, I guess. Uh, I hope you enjoyed. If you've gotten this far in the video, hey, sub, if you want to follow along. I uh, thank you for watching. Uh, hit a like, it helps a lot, you know. It's th it's other people will see this when they see, you know, when they're searching for War Machine content. Um, you know, help helps feed the algorithm, as they say, which, I mean, we're so far outside of the, the algorithm. We're so niche that it wouldn't even matter. But, uh, yeah, if you want to see more, like I said, sub, follow along. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.